Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another brand new episode. I'm back. I'm back from vacation. I had a whole lot of fun hanging out in Florida for a week. I uh, went down to Orlando and saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers and hung out on Daytona Beach for a week and had a great time with my wife. And uh, But I'm back. I'm back for business and... Uh, and I got a brand new episode for you featuring my friends in Blonde Guru. They stopped by to talk about their brand new record and their release party happening Friday night at Off Broadway in St. Louis, Missouri with uh, our friends in Yard Eagle and Lizard Tones. And you'll hear all about it on today's episode. I do want to remind you, as always, Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by... Friendship Brewing Company in Wentzville, Missouri, serving up all your craft beer needs. Over 25 rotating taps out there, all kinds of delicious food. Uh, you got your burgers and flatbread pizzas and nachos and pretzels and salads, whatever you're into. Uh, they've got all kinds of options out there for you. And you can get some great live music every weekend coming up. Uh, this weekend, you got Buddy and Q kicking it off Friday night, 7 o'clock on September 23rd. September 24th, Saturday night, Denver Wade Trent returns. And on Sunday afternoon, 1 to 4, on September 25th, James Bertles. You can find their full concert calendar, food and beer menu, and everything else you need at friendshipbrewingcompany.com. And be sure to follow along with them on the socials, Facebook and Instagram, to keep up to date. But uh, come on out, enjoy a cold beer on the patio, and and uh, have a great time out at Friendship Brewing Company in Wentzville, Missouri. My big thank you to my friends at Roughneck Beard Company and American Rambler for their continued support. Uh, Roughneck Beard Company is proud to present Roughneck Light. Finally, a lightweight beard oil that won't weigh you down in the hot summer months. Roughneck Light is formulated to have all the same benefits as our signature line with only half the weight. And it's got a cool, refreshing scent as well. Grab a bottle today at rough, of Roughneck Light at roughneckbeardcompany.com and use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off your purchase. Including all your favorite beard oils, beard balms, your junk powder, your combs, your soaps, whatever you might need to take care of that beard and mustache of yours. Uh, you can find it all at roughneckbeardcompany.com. And you can find them uh, locally here in St. Louis area in Maplewood off of Manchester. Stop by the shop or shop 24 7 at roughneckbeardcompany.com. Uh, and also you can find them on Facebook and Instagram as well. So, uh, that is it for me, everybody. If you need anything else from me, please email me at rockpaperpodcast at gmail. Uh, check out rockpaperpodcast.com. Hit me up on the socials. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy this brand new episode with Blonde Guru. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hey, you guys. This is Sean from Blog Guru. You're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Let's get into it. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper. Paper covers box. Rock beats is the shame covers nonstop. Never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double decker fudge round rolling round town. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero. He's your bestie. Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Rock Paper Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with Blonde Guru. 
welcome to the show everyone thanks for having thank us thank you what's going on this is uh very cool uh, i'm excited to be here uh this is actually like one of the oh, this is really a neat like space we have here and uh I guess this is where practice is at. This and stuff. is rock bottom. Rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, I finally made it. Man. Rock bottom. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's just cool, like seeing surrounded by all the keyboards and stuff, and and uh, amplifiers. And some would say there's too many keyboards. <laughs> Someone be wrong. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just uh, it's just cool, man. I'm glad to. Glad to be here hanging with you all, talking about some brand new tunes, and uh, we got a big release party, and all kinds of fun things happening, so I guess before we get rolling too far, you guys uh, want to go around the mics and say hi and introduce yourselves for those listening? Uh, I'm Hal. I'm on keys. Uh, Sean, drums. I'm Noah. I do guitars and vocals. Yeah, and we're, we're missing... We're missing... Uh, josh which is the other guitar guy and um cole plays bass right on almost forgot cole <laughs> <laughs> he, like he almost forgot practice all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, we uh this is this is like uh, some of my favorite stuff because i i love um just doing this show and continually discovering new music coming out of our town and and um you, i guess like uh Blonde Guru has been around for for a little bit now, right? We've definitely been trying. Um, We started writing music probably four years ago now, almost five, just right at the tail end of high school. And then uh, just everything fell apart and then got pulled away, other bands and projects and all that. And then we started recording the record. COVID happened. Um, I got into a motorcycle wreck and couldn't move my body for a while. (laughs) And then uh, Sean finally came into the picture, said, here's how we're doing the record. And (laughs) he wouldn't let me delete it. So here we are. Yeah. And and how... How did you get how how come in the story? How's my sister? Oh, okay. We're related. Yeah, we've been making music together for forever. Yeah. Very cool. Just works. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you uh, you all have that in common. Yeah, that you can... it's kind of like an oasis thing. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> like right now, it's cool to give it like four years. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That one. That one didn't end so so great. It'll be fine. Yeah. Give it another twenty five years. <laughs> might be. That uh, uh, man, but they did create some great music together. That's for sure. Like there's a some of those songs are incredibly fun. To sing along to sean would disagree well i mean yeah it's not for everybody it's, you know <laughs> we all have our likes and dislikes <laughs> yeah some are wrong uh <laughs> but uh yeah it's just uh it's weird that they like can't stand each other anymore. yeah like, like you're in the biggest band in the world self-proclaimed <laughs> and uh, you just hate each other for god knows why <laughs> and can't get over it after like literally 25 years now i guess 20 Imagine how much money they've turned down because they won't settle a fight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. I'd love to be there. <laughs> well, that's kind of, I mean, it's almost the same thing with the uh, the Robinsons also with, uh, um, oh, damn it, I'm going to blink on their damn name, uh, Black Crows. Oh. Man, uh, uh, they, uh, I mean, they went through the same kind of thing, like, where they couldn't all get along for a long time and they finally uh all got decided to put it in the past and make yeah. that money probably so, ran out of money yeah. yeah right either they ran out of money or the number hit right, <laughs> right, right. It hit their their goal yeah <laughs> yeah even uh guns and roses are getting along now making they're backup. trying yeah try. give another couple <laughs> yeah. years right. and we'll be back to nothing but yeah um, but no, it's, uh, I think that's really cool, man. Like, do you get that you guys get to play together and make music and, um, I don't know, me and my brother, like we, we get along just fine, but we don't really have like that, that common thing or that we, we're both very different and, uh, you know, which is fine. Like it's, it's cool that we, uh, we both have our separate interests, but he's always been into like, you know, working on cars and stuff and, and I don't know anything about cars and th- so we do. We do agree on music, though. We do enjoy going to concerts together and things, but I just wish we had, like, that thing where we could, like, pick up 
instruments and jam together right. and stuff like that's that's neat so uh so blonde guru has been uh a project for a while like you said and but we finally we got uh things all the the stars aligned and we got to in the down here at rock bottom and started recording this record yeah and it's titled your friends and uh it will be available everywhere on september 9th yep next friday or by the time you're listening it'll be yeah. out probably uh so what's uh i mean what not nine songs eight, um, eight songs right eight songs eight real songs yeah, yeah. there's like a little half thing in there <laughs> yeah and uh well, let's talk about some of what like went into this and like and how we uh we started to actually getting this to shape up as a record um guess we got to go back to the beginning where we kind of started like a couple of the songs uh do you remember and marble reds um cole and i wrote way back for a high school project it was like music text you learn how to record and getting to use like a somewhat studio to do all that and we had to turn in something because i had like an independent study that really i just used a year of screwing around in a studio for <laughs> i turned in very little of anything but i had to show something at the end of the year so we turned in a couple songs and i passed with like an a plus <laughs> so from there we we're like yo what if we actually made this into a real thing and we tried and then like the other groups were in it just wasn't really working time wise um but then the second like those groups broke we're like let's actually do this and then we pulled in some other people like been trying to steal sean for years <laughs> um sean was filling in before he was in the group just as a drummer for shows we had booked um and then josh we pulled in we went to school with them and um yeah, good kid. Yeah. <laughs> Stole him from another band, too. All right. We're yeah. collectors, if you will. All right. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, <laughs> <but> yeah. <laughs> by all the keys. and, um, But, uh, yeah, so I guess uh, so they started with those songs, and now we, uh, we, like I said, we had these official recordings. We have a single available now and we well maybe by the time you hear this you'll hear the whole record but uh answer your phone is uh, available right now and we got a music video for it and yeah. everything so let's talk about uh this particular track let's talk about it now let's talk about it uh answer your phone is a midwest love ballad <laughs> of sorts <laughs> you know some things work out some things don't um and if they don't, they come around. So it's a nice song. Um, really just something I originally wrote in like one night and then came down here and recorded on piano and then recorded a vocal layer and another vocal layer and a vocal layer and called it good. And then we did it the right way. <laughs> You're at goodwill, I'm coming down from a week 
real fun music video came out of that one. I wanted to shoot it like on site. So we have the Waffle House in the background. And then if you turn the Goodwills right there on Limburg. So it's it's a perfect location. Yeah. Um, it's where all love stories yeah. <laughs> happen. Honestly, if you're from the Midwest, you're going to go on a date at Waffle House. It happens. <laughs> yep. Mine uh, mine was an IHOP, but uh, it, was pretty, right. it was pretty close. That's close enough. Still, 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 breakfast, still breakfast food involved. Actually, I mean, that's a true story. Me and my wife sat in an uh, IHOP uh, booth talking for most of the night on one of our first dates and stuff. That's so. sweet. Yep. At least it's not Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a proud sponsor of Rock... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Denny's. No, I, uh, I, man, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, the video is great, man. It really looked, uh, like I like the some simplicity of it. it was, just, yeah. We were going for like, you know, that whole anti pop scene now is just a bunch of people who can't dance trying to dance and like they get people paying attention for that. So we figured we give it our shot. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. We showed up. We were probably in that parking lot for like an hour and then we if left. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like that. the best thing was like, I'm in a, a suit in a parking lot and everyone driving by, like they'll slow down or like a car pulled up next to us for like five minutes and just stop to see what we were doing. And then you look across the street at Waffle House and everybody's in a suit. <laughs> and like, I completely forgot, but this was like prom night for all the high schoolers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so everyone driving by and everyone at the Waffle House across the street, they're all in suits and dresses. And I'm like, at least I'm not like all that out of place. It's easier to not feel embarrassed. Right. It's like the only night of the year where you wouldn't look out of place in a suit. Right. And it was unintentional. <laughs> it worked out perfect. Yeah. I don't know. I just would have, I would have been tempted to go in there and just like get them all involved in, into it also. Like, you know, just extras in the music video that like the original plan was to shoot it in the waffle house parking lot and then we got there and we're like there's terrible lighting like i'd have to have my brights on the car to shoot it and then it's like blinding customers and i don't want to get in trouble or kicked off <laughs> <laughs> it's a waffle house they deal with enough stuff yeah, i don't want to fuck house with their has staff such strict standards yeah. for people's behavior <laughs> i am scared of waffle house servers like yeah. They may not kick me out, but they may kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of uh, good memories just sitting in those those diners and different yeah. things. Like, and um, but I'm sure those those ladies and guys probably have quite sto- some diff- way different stories to share uh, dealing with the uh, drunks every night and stuff. Right. All, all the servers and everybody over there. It's probably an interesting job to be uh, pricing it all. That's like, you got back the yellow. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> Where's that campaign at? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> they deal with too much. Yeah. I saw something online about it. Uh, they like Waffle House is just uh, breakfast hibachi or something like that. Like, a, you know, something along those lines. Like, I never really thought about it that way, but yeah, that's. I mean, they put that griddle to work (laughs) (laughs) and they do a damn good job. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all, let's actually, let's just uh, stop this podcast here and go to Waffle House. All right. Yeah. We should have done this in like the, (laughs) the big five person booth, like the one with three and two. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I did. uh, I have actually, I've done a couple of live recordings like at, uh, we not in a Waffle House, but in, uh, I did do a Denny's. Okay. Again, proud sponsor. Um, and, uh, those are always uh, some of the most fun, though, like, because just like the whole element of being, you know, n- never know what's going to happen once you hit record and stuff. And yeah. So we've actually, like, I did one with my friend Sarah in there, and we end up, like, recording uh, or uh, interviewing the uh, our waitress and getting, got some of her, st- you know, story and stuff. And it was just, like, again, it was just fun to be, never, you know, just the surprise of, like, what's going to happen once in a Stenny's and stuff so those are some of my favorite recordings some very weird random things there was one it was like guys like these guys playing dungeons and dragons behind us uh in the other booth and that was so we got their reaction all recorded on audio and some other some other weird stories but uh so maybe next video for sure we're definitely uh to move it inside the waffle house yeah. and 
maybe uh i'll have to go to one of the ratty ones where like not everyone shows up like the limbering one's too hopping yeah. <laughs> if you go to like telegraph that place is run down <laughs> uh, well as far as uh the song is uh is this based on uh, a true story uh your i think somewhat um there were a few things pulled from like actual experiences and then the rest was just kind of pieced together um to you know fit the narrative mm-hmm. you know it's a song i don't want to put too much of myself yeah, in it all right i do like yeah. that he called it uh, you know your your mid- midwest love ballad and stuff like i do think like you know that's all especially a certain uh you know, time period and stuff in our lives. So like we spend a lot of time, especially in like in the early <clears throat> for me, like I think of, I think about a lot, like my, you know, the, the time period or like maybe middle school or high school, early relationships and stuff. And you spend a lot of time just talking on the phone with, because you don't have like, uh, you don't have a car or you're pretty right. straight. So you spend like most of your relationships on the phone and stuff. And just like the whole, uh, you know, answering your phone and you know trying to get people now it's like people don't even want to talk on the phone today right. like there's you know it's all text message and stuff and why are they calling me yeah talking on the phone's too intimate now. right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, just like i don't want to take time out of my day to do that all the time <laughs> especially because like i don't always have a lot to say right yeah when people collect call me i'm like wow this is really inappropriate <laughs> how to talk to me yeah. like this yeah uh, send texts like it, normal people yeah <laughs> uh so uh the record due out september 9th uh, we have a big album release party over at off broadway on the 23rd mm-hmm. and uh this is gonna be a real special night bringing along our dear friends in yard eagle and lizard tones yeah and uh it's gonna be a fun night celebrating this record and um, so what, uh, you guys, uh, plan on playing the whole, whole record? Yeah, or? we'll probably play the record, um, a couple other songs that aren't really recorded yet and possibly a cover. Um, just trying to keep it as like a release show. I've been to so many release shows where like you go and they play like four of the songs and then everything else is like old stuff. And it's like, I want to hear the record. Yeah. Like I want to hear what you're celebrating. Like don't be afraid to play the actual songs just because no one really knows them yet mm-hmm. that's the whole but, point is really yeah yeah them, that's the know? thing get to know them yeah yeah i agree i think like i don't know i mean i've again i there's no right or wrong to any of it but yeah um and i do like you get what you want to create a party you want people to sing along and dance to know these songs you know kind of know these songs a little bit but i Sometimes I like when people just like go through and like hit and play on the record and run it all the way through. That's how it should be. You know, just listen to it front to back. Right. That's the best way to write them. But it should be a real fun night. We got the lizard tones, which just remember seeing them at like foam a long time ago. Everyone's just kind of kicking their feet, dancing. And then uh, bringing along Yard Eagle and Baxter and the gang and all that. Um, Everyone will be hooting and hollering, having a great time. And then uh, we'll come on and just depress the <laughs> the heck out of everybody. <laughs> Slow it down, make it loud. Yeah, uh, Yard Eagles got some new material too. They're uh, slow rolling some stuff out, yeah. a couple singles and things. So a good uh, time, Chuck cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Yard Eagles, so it's gonna be be a real fun night. I honestly don't know a whole lot about Lizard Tones yet, so I need to need to get hip and get to meet them. It's good stuff. I think they just put a record out a couple months ago that's worth listening to. It's a lot of just like, you know, garage, indie rock type stuff. It's good. Nice. Catchy, and they're all real nice people. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't been out yet, uh, Off-Broadway just recently remodeled. Uh, I was just over there for a party and beautiful room, man. Nice. uh, The stage is expanded, and the patio is all redone, and just uh, sounds great, looks great, and just... uh, I mean, it's always been one of my favorite rooms, but now they've even, you know, made it better. So it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be cool. We're really excited. It's like the first, um, like venue show we're playing, like, a we're being on a stage. We've done like sinkhole and parties and like stuff like that. And a couple fundraisers, but we haven't actually been up on like a stage with sound people. 
<laughs> so now so. we're like going to be at a real venue. Right. Like, it's it's going to be a good album. time. I don't know. It's just so exciting to have like hard copies of of the record. You know, it was definitely like challenging trying to book it because like no one's ever heard of us. <laughs> So when I emailed off Broadway, they kind of gave me like a very straightforward, like if you aren't that big, you're not going to sell tickets and this isn't going to be worth it for anyone. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so now there's a lot of weight on my shoulders. So if you aren't busy, uh, September 23rd, <laughs> please help Noah's mind. Pre-sale tickets are cheaper than at the door. Uh, it'll be a good night. Yeah. Uh yeah, man. I uh, so you you said physicals now. Yeah. 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 Um, we're gonna have hard copies of the CDs. We're gonna have some cool merch. Yeah. Matt Bosler, D, is pressing our shirts now. I think. Um, hopefully, he said he was going to. <laughs> you never know with him. Um, yeah, and then we have some little like stickers and all that that we'll be mailing out with CDs and merch and all that when they when they're done. It'll be cool. We're doing some limited shirts just for the release show. So if you want some fancy ones that just repeatedly say your friends don't like you, uh, <laughs> come get one. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that. Uh, I think it's funny that you say uh, the Matt Bosler because uh, well, there's two of them. Well, I yeah, just now, yeah, now he has a now. yeah. I've known of the other Matt Bosler uh, th- through the internet a little bit, and uh, but I thought it was really funny that uh, Matt had him on the on the show and also mispronounced his name. So is uh, he a Basler? Or? No, he's a Bosler also. Oh, okay. Uh, but what well, was part of the joke is everybody always calls him Basler, and <laughs> and so he he called him Basler and the other the other Matt. <laughs> so that, well, if you're if you're gonna have two, you have to pronounce it two different ways, right? But I guess that F really makes the distinction between the two. Right. Yep. Otherwise, they're completely the same person. But yeah, there's a good one and a bad one. Right. <laughs> and the good one's not the one with the F. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah, he uh, he does some quality uh, print work. I'm uh, modeling uh, one of his shirts today so Duke. very fresh uh, which you can you can clearly see on the audio so <laughs> just picture uh, it it's a picture of a dog <laughs> but just the head and right. collar yeah it's my, my friend duke yeah um but yeah no man be cool man i'm uh, i'm glad that you guys are doing physicals i know a lot of people getting away from it and obviously it's uh you know it's difficult because cd players are, are, are not as common anymore yeah. and stuff but I'm a, I'm a big collector on CDs, and I, I know tapes making a, a big comeback too, and vinyl and everything. So yeah. I like uh, having a physical representation of the album. It's like owning things. It's nice to like go to a show and throw a band a few bucks and like have something. Yeah. Well, even that, like, even if I don't like, uh, you know, I'm, I might spend it on Spotify more. Yeah. But I don't feel as guilty. Because, right. Because I, I did buy the actual record, you know, so like. Right. I know they're not going to make any money streaming. Right. Like, <laughs> so if I can, you know, throw eight to ten bucks on a CD, it yeah. feels a lot better. And plus, like, we're putting all, like, the lyrics in there and a bunch of photos that we took um, just throughout the course of making the record. So it'll be, in, like, a nice little photo book. Very cool. Along with it. Yeah. I mean, that's. Again, that's why I like doing it because you get those personal touches like that. Yeah, you know, you get to—it's an actual piece of art, you know, not just uh, these eight songs and stuff. So you get, you get it all. But uh, yes, yeah, so come out and grab one of those on uh, September twenty-third, and like Noah said, you can pr- buy the uh, pre-sale uh, tickets and save a couple bucks and spend that money at the bar instead. Yeah. So, um, let's uh, let's talk about another. Uh, tune and um, this one is called Need and it is uh, track one on the record. Yeah. It's like the big opening. Yeah. We are originally going to put it at the very end. Um, it's just it's a song about you know feeling very stuck in place and looking for anything else to get you that out of that. It's uh, something we were working with just a few years ago when we started on it it wasn't there and we started on it and it wasn't there and finally i think it's how we want it to sound and the message we want it to put out there but 
it's one of my favorites to play. I think it's a very nice dynamic range. I feel like a dog at the foot of your bed waiting to be invited again like a drum with a broken head misleading the rhythm section like my foot is glued to the gas and I know I'm going nowhere fast is this it or am I just blinded I need to get out or get behind it
are you writing all the lyrics or are you guys um, collaborate on that or how's this we collaborate on that i think a lot of the times i'll come up with like a base idea and then i'll run it by hal um yeah because how well, you're if hal's featured on on this track as vocals right yeah yeah hal's actually um a lot of the songs they're like harmonies and layers that right. are just kind of buried in the mix yeah um especially on like do you remember there's like five or seven vocal takes throughout the choruses that are all just stacked like layers to sound like a big you know orchestra or symphony of voices behind you oh yeah i would say like at least half the songs yeah has some how vocals mm-hmm. on them too but to answer the question, I get everything as close as I can, and then I get stuck on like a word, and I'm like, "Hey, will you finish this?" And then Hal will write it way better than I will. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Hal Using takes it to the end words. zone. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's, yeah. What's I was going I just like I did uh, notice that like on listening through the record, there was uh, a lot of like kind of kind of sounds kind of like gang vocal kind of you know moments and stuff. Like in a couple songs where uh, it's you know so it's fun to hear uh hear these vocal tracks coming through like that and um but yeah man i really liked uh i mean as a collection as a whole like very uh very just you know kind of chill and easy uh to to put on and just kind of groove along to it there's some 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 tasty uh stuff in there for sure thank you yeah i really enjoyed it yeah it's certainly not what i think any of us would call like an upbeat record but (laughs) that wasn't really the point right it was Uh, more like it was just a lot of moody songs from back in the day that we really wanted to you know make sound good rather than here's me singing into audacity and releasing that (laughs) so sean can take a lot of credit for making things sound good so everything was recorded down here in the, uh, in the basement well or? the sign behind you we stole from city music because they are now um a pile of dirt they are gone we started recording when i still worked there um doing all the drums some vocals and then they for announced the record yeah. i think the like most of the drums from this album were recorded in 2019 yeah it's been a while yeah <laughs> like, because we started doing that and then like i said covid and the wreck and all that really sets you back yeah and also just self-doubt as well <laughs> lots of that involved <laughs> crippling in <this>. self-doubt <laughs> yeah this band has a plentiful amount of that we're working through it yeah one TikTok at a time <laughs> seems to be the way yeah but uh yeah we we started recording this album a couple years ago uh recorded drums kind of had like basic ideas of songs and at the time i recorded those i wasn't in the band no i was (laughs) just just recording the drums he was just doing me a favor because i could not find anyone to play drums (laughs) (laughs) and eventually it came to the point where i was like i feel like I like these songs a lot, so maybe I should just be the drummer. <laughs> maybe Simple solution. Maybe I have time for that. Uh, and uh, it's, I gotta say, even before I was officially in the band, but I was just kind of playing with them, I remember there was a pocket of time where I was coming here to rehearse shows with them for a couple gigs they had. And I was like consistently really excited for it like every week like just looking forward to playing and a lot of the songs that we were rehearsing at that time are songs that aren't even out yet there's stuff that will probably be coming like down the line a little bit that is the upbeat stuff though yeah (laughs) not this record but the next one uh and uh i don't know when something just kind of resonates as being really honest no bullshit but also no pretense it it's kind of hard to not enjoy it sorry yeah. if that makes you guys feel that's, awkward that's well put that's very sweet yeah. yeah i really feel like sean swooped in and saved us yeah you know like i i don't know where we would be without sean he's very like driven you know um we've gotten a lot done yeah but i guess I don't know, like you came in, you did drum tracks, and then we took a gap of time, but then it was just 
Sean was the driving force that said, so when are we going to do this yeah. every time? It's like as much as I enjoyed making this record at times, there are definitely other times where it's been like, do I really want to release this? Is this like a good enough first record? And uh, I can comfortably say now that I feel like it is. If we didn't have Sean, this probably would never come out. Yeah. So right back at you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a... I think it's a lot easier to say it about somebody else's music. You know what I mean? Like, I've never written anything on my own that I ever thought was good enough to even remotely, like, play in front of people. So, Which is a bad opinion. Because <laughs> I've uh, heard it. Uh, but, like, at the end of the day, like, it's a lot easier to kind of, like, push somebody else to do that because it's not you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, like... Everything that Hal's ever written is amazing. I think everything Noah's ever showed me is amazing. Like, really, it's a... <laughs> he's being like, minus. stop, stop. <laughs> Don't say anymore. Uh, and I really just wanted to share it with people because... <laughs> I don't... I, I think they just needed a little kick in the ass. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm... Uh, that's me. That's my role. Like I'm like I'm the cheerleader. You know, it's like I'm the I'm so proud of my friends, and I like want the world to see it and hear it, and like you know, and it's like I mean that's the whole this whole show. The world it's, needs you, Shane. <laughs> yeah, but, honestly, the whole town benefits from having someone to talk about their their music with, yeah. just but, to get them out of the shell and give them like an actual like personality. It makes it a lot easier to approach these people in public if you can be like, oh, I heard you on Shane's podcast rather than, oh, I, I like your pedal board. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, but uh, at the same time, like, I really read that all resonated with me because like at the same time I go through the same battles my in my own head, you know, like, w why am I doing this? What, you know, and all the stuff like, and this is, I think that's anybody that's creative, you know, yeah. it's like you're going to run into those days where you just like, this is shit. Why am I, doing, you know, what am I doing? Like, so, but you know, and then somebody like Sean comes in and says, Hey, this is good. So we all need Sean in our, our life. We all need a Sean. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, being that I really, I don't know much about how at all. And I'd like to, uh, and she hasn't said a whole lot over there. So, uh, what, what's, uh, what was some of your musical stuff before, uh, blonde guru? I mean, was it always, uh, yeah, start from the beginning. Yeah. Violin um, lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I started as a violinist. Yeah. Um, that lasted forever, it feels like. Um, and then I think I just started playing piano. I guess I can thank Adele. I think that's you what definitely did can. that for me. That's yeah. If um, you didn't have that book, it would yeah. have nothing. <laughs> um but then it, it feels like most of the time I sit down and I just, like, write something on piano, and I don't know. I guess I've been given a lot of um, creative freedom in the guru stuff. Some of the parts have been written because it was, like, Noah and Cole's high school um, project, but... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why the uh, on the album cover... The, the two people that are on it are Noah and Cole. <laughs> I think it's more to do with that being a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> it is a dope picture, but also, All right. like, it, it's the two that, like, actually yeah. started it. I right? think, like, this record would sound very different had it been, like, you know, me and Josh or Sean and I making this. Um, this album does sound a lot like Cole. He's got his own project. Um, that's what finds me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the record's called Half Nelson, I Half believe. Nelson. Yeah, Cole made like a nice little shoegaze dream pop album about a year ago now. Um, it was really cool. You can definitely hear a lot of him in this record and a lot of that influence pulling from, you know, old dream pop and shoegaze, putting that into this. Yeah. I think had it been like a, like a Hal and I album, it would come out probably a lot. Um, I didn't know how to describe that. Me either. Thinking like yeah. <laughs> moody, but very polished, probably. Yeah. Like would have been a lot less washed out and a lot more, um, 
I don't know, kind of sterile in a good way. <laughs> sterile? Yeah. Yeah, that's a word I'm thinking of. I like how many harmonies I was Clean. allowed to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was great. So you think, uh, you, like Sean said, you guys are been you know rehearsing some other stuff that we might hear uh yeah someday but uh you think is that stuff more of a collaborative you think that like, stuff is actually stuff we wrote before this record so it's a lot right? of um you know like garage rock kind of indie rock type stuff yeah. closer to like strokes arctic monkeys stuff that we're like really excited to get to the second we can call this album done (laughs) like it's been so long in the making we're all just really excited to you know play the show put out the album promote it and move on to the next thing yeah and do it fast do it fast yeah (laughs) we're trying to put out like six albums this year pull a king gizzard yeah yeah man yeah, well, they just posted that picture. Like, they got three three albums already or something like that. It's like, unnecessary. Only three? Yeah. Yeah, they put out six in a year a couple of years yeah. ago. That's just... As we continue to roll out the everything, like, do we want to get out on the road and try some weekends uh, testing it out in other markets? Or what are you guys uh, wanting? What's what's kind of the big goal for the finish out the year with as a blonde guru? Um, yeah, BAM meeting. What yeah. you think, Noah? <laughs> Well, Josh is in school throughout the year, so we can't really take Because he's baby. Yeah. He's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't really interrupt that. I think his parents would be probably pretty upset with me. <laughs> he wouldn't be, if though. I yeah. took him out of, out of college. <laughs> They're going for creative writing, and that may be useful to us in the future. <laughs> Thinking vainly. Um, I would like for next summer for us to hit up you know, just at least the Midwest, um, you know, get out of town for a couple of weeks. I think it'd be fun. Like I know nowadays there's not much benefit to touring or anything unless you already have a bit of a, um, bit of following, but it's very fun. It'd be like taking a little vacation with the band. Just yeah. to play out more would be so yeah. cool. I'm hoping that this show, like we get some good exposure and people want to hear us at other venues. Yeah. And- yeah. Cause like right now, like we can't, answer the questions venues are asking like how much do you draw like what can we expect and i'm like i have no idea (laughs) we've played at the sinkhole on tuesday nights at 10 p.m um so i think the show will help us kind of gauge that and then be able to see you know what we want to go after after sure well i I think like you'd be able to record some live content and be able to like here's what we sound like live also compared to the with the record and everything else like just have there's opportunities to do that and showcase what you, you know, uh, especially as, as you guys want to expand out to other markets and like, you know, pass the link to somebody like, Hey, here's our last show or whatever. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately I think that would just be a ton of fun to hop in the van and, and uh, you know, hit the road with the, with everybody and have some fun. And, uh, it got me thinking though, like when that day comes along, what, uh, what's your like uh go to road snack? What's uh what, when you, when you guys are, uh, when you guys are loading up uh, on a, for a road trip, what's your what do you guys uh, what snacks are you taking with you? I'm a big snack kind of guy. <laughs> um, I gotta think for a minute. You wanna go? I mean, it'd have to be like a bag of snacks. You don't pick like sure. one thing, yeah, yeah. you know. What's, what's in the rotation? What's, though? what's number one? You thinking? Twizzlers. Probably. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a safe road trip yeah. snack. They're not messy. Pretzels. Pretzels. I mean, I see the appeal of, like, trail mix and stuff like that just because, like, it's everything. But also, it kind of feels like nothing, too. Yeah. You know? It's a lot of, like, not the good stuff. (laughs) It kind of makes you feel like a deep psychological, like, question over, like, is this this really doing anything for me? If it's up to me, um, it's gummy worms. Mm Mm-hmm. Or twin snakes, which are just gummy worms, but better. <laughs> one sour, one is sweet. <laughs> um, and then Reese's Take Five. Not a big <laughs> peanut butter person, but Take Five has a special place in my heart. Yeah. That pretty solid choice. It's good. Chocolate, peanut butter. Gotta be pencil, candy stuff. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Pretty sweet or savory? Sweet, baby. All right. Sweet. <laughs> now we're a sweet band. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, so I've been watching, uh, 
I've been on a, a SpongeBob kick. I've been watching. <laughs> Aren't a, we all? Yeah, I've been watching a bunch. Uh, uh, and all these uh, Nickelodeon commercials keep coming up. And like, there's a speaking of the, uh, uh, you know, gummy worm stuff. Like, there's like this ad that keeps popping up, and it's like a, it's like a circle container, and around the outside of the thing is like these little like looks like you know gummy worms, but they're like little sticks, and then they're like salted or whatever with the the um uh, sour stuff and then like, like a margarita <laughs> yeah and then like and then there's like a, a dip thing you're like so it's kind of like a f- fun dip but it's like Worthy. it's like a some kind of like but they're for like they're like sour stick things and okay. i don't know i'm just like these things look really weird to me and and i think about that a lot i think about like the weird candies and different things that like they were offered or marketed to kids and stuff and like i'm just like uh and a lot of them are, you know, long gone now, but it's just like, yeah, like, why were they trying to kill children? They target, <laughs> it's like stuff that makes your teeth hurt at our age. Yeah. But like, what were those things the, that the, I think Zach and Cody promoted? It was like the stick that you pull out and you put the drops on. Um, is it oh. just a juicy drop pop? Is that all? It is? I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> those things were so bad. But <laughs> I, you, you tried one you, of those? Yeah, but you couldn't resist getting them because, like, Zach and Cody had them. They were sick. <laughs> uh, like, you could drop as many drops on there and be like, yeah, I got five. I'm tough because it was super sour. <laughs> do those still exist? Probably not, and probably for good reason. Uh, yeah. I think the crabby I bet you they do, do honestly. I don't know. That There's stuff no... never really goes away. You just forget about it. <laughs> just right. because I don't watch, like, Nickelodeon or Disney XD, like... <laughs> Disney XD. Is that still a thing? Probably. I hope not. Probably. But because you don't watch those channels anymore, you don't get those same targeted ads. Right. Like they were going after those kids. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh there uh just recently saw like uh those Dunkaroos uh a little bit ago <laughs> and like I guess they're kinda of making a comeback or something. Maybe they've maybe they've always been there, but now I've just saw them again. Like I haven't seen these in forever, so um but yeah, I don't know. It just uh, makes me laugh when I when I see. Uh, and also, I've been like I'm I'm working in an elementary again, so like I'm I'm excited to like go work a lunch shift and see what all kind of weird snacks these oh, yeah. again. Like you know, it's just like. But yeah, like I said, it's just funny what's marketed to kids these days and stuff on through their through their TV. But uh, yeah, I uh, I stick to the 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 basics, you know. Like I said, Twizzlers uh, is a salad. My mom like uh, kind of got me on Twizzlers, like Twizzlers and Tootsie Pops. That's like were her two favorites, and like so. Uh, now, are you are you like uh, one of the Twizzler rope ones? No, nah, like I like just up? I like the uh, the strawberry ones. Uh, the uh, the basic, you know, the standard straws. standard red ones. Yeah, yeah. I feel uh, like those rope ones just don't. They just don't do the same thing. It's yeah. a lot of work, but it's fun. Yeah. It's a different texture. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a not... good texture. It's like you're like. I don't want my food yeah. to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to like. Well, work. when Sean's driving, <laughs> you should not distract him. He's yeah. been known to wreck a car. <laughs> now my own car. <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah, not a good tour idea to give Sean snacks on the road. Yeah. He might clip someone's mirror. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't think he even clipped their mirror though. I think I think it might have just been like a little spot. Now their mirror is gone. Maybe, <laughs> anyway. I don't remember that part. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to let Hal drive since yeah. since Noah wrecked the, the motorcycle too. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> I went too fast, too quick, and I flipped. <laughs> too, it too, happens. Too fast, too furious, man. Exactly. I was trying to live up to my Vin Diesel standards. <laughs> uh, it's family. Yeah, it's family. Uh, all right. Um, so I got uh, some questions I want to ask you all and get your take on these. And um, what, uh, what about a... A song that always gets stuck in your head. Uh, I know we uh, we mentioned some some music that we've been listening to. You know, you mentioned uh, Arctic Monkeys and different things. But is there is there anything that's been currently on repeat lately, or uh, woke up humming along to this morning? I feel like the ones that get stuck in your head the most are the ones you don't want to get stuck oh, in yeah, your head. For right? sure, yeah. <laughs> I feel like the good songs never get stuck in my head. Yeah. 
It's always. I had to, I had to uh, you know, it's been a, been a minute now, but uh, when it was like, you know, the height of its popularity, but I had that watermelon sugar stuck in my yeah. like, I mean, It's like something incredibly simple and, you know, poppy to it and catchy. Just like it just gets on a loop in your head and you're just like, and even though I don't really like it, but it's like, it's stuck there now. I, uh, right now it's Black Country, New Road, just the song Concord. I have the chorus stuck in my head nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, you know, great, great album, great song. Um, but sometimes I just want to sleep <laughs> and not hear that in my head. All right. And then, uh, other times it'll be like three in the morning and I have Girls and Boys by Blur stuck in my head, which is like, <laughs> it's a great song, but it's like girls who like boys, who like girls, who do boys. <laughs> and it's like, it drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you got one of those now? Actually, I feel like most of the time if, if, songs are stuck in my head it's like soundtracks so like pirates of the caribbean a lot <laughs> or like the sherlock holmes soundtrack <laughs> or the spider-man <laughs> movies oh my god they're just i mean were those all danny elfman i don't know but <laughs> they're very good whatever danny elfman did the soundtrack to everything you've ever heard. and that's why yeah, they're unless oh, it was just fantastic Zimmer. unless it was han Zimmer. no disrespect <laughs> yeah uh danny elfman's uh he's super talented that's uh, some good stuff for sure. It's funny. I just told uh, Stacy, uh, my wife, the other mm-hmm. day, she's like a huge Nightmare uh, fan. And I let her know that Danny actually is the voice of Jack. He sing- he does the singing parts of huh. for, J- for Jack Skellington. And there's a guy, in, I forget his name now, but there's a def- different actor that does the all the voice acting. But Danny does all the singing parts. To, so That's He's got sick. pipes? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, impressive. Damn, Danny. Yep. <laughs> damn, damn, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. All right. Uh-huh. Speaking of which, <laughs> that's while, my huh? song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all right. What about um, a? Uh, is there a fictional band you all would like to see live sometime, uh, if possible? Uh, like uh, anything from movie or TV? Frank. Or? The Soren from prefers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I'm blank and I know there's good ones. Because it's like you got to find a fictional band who like didn't go on to play actual shows. All right. I do want to see the Wiggles, though. They're doing on like that <laughs> pub tour or whatever. That band is not fictional, ago. though. I, they're, they're extremely real. They exist in like the PBS cinematic universe. That was what I grew up on. I know, but the like. P- the, the PCU. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, like, it's, uh, what's the Red Wiggles name? Do you know it? No, I don't. They're just fake the fan. To me. Murray, that's his name. What's the Yellow Wiggles name? Oh my lord! Uh, original Yellow Wiggle. We're we're talking OG members here. <laughs> you can't cheat. His name is I, Greg. I know I'm blanking right now. <laughs> I'm a little bummed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh. The Wiggles slap. On this fake band's real rock record, they have Stillwater from uh, Almost Famous, which yeah. is actually, that was a real band. That was a real Pretty band? Pretty sure that was like a real band back in the day. Well, that's a diss on that their name, used. isn't it? <laughs> um, Spinal Tap. That's too easy. Real answer. <laughs> Fucking Dr. Teeth. There you go. Dr. Yeah. Teeth. <laughs> That's what usually my go to. If I see animal tear it up on it, the kit, yeah, man, go now, ham. Now we're talking. <laughs> I, my, uh, my girlfriend Zoe and I rescued a possum from the side of the road a few years ago. <laughs> like it was sad because like the whole family had been run over except for the one, and so we took it home. You know, uh, got the the Espelac, the puppy milk formula, and bottle fed it for a few days. Uh, but his name was Doctor Teeth because of that. How's he doing? Uh, I have no idea. Oh. He he went back to the rescue and all that, and they took care of him. And we were told he was released, so yeah. that's important as long as he stays out of traffic. Well, Dr. Teeth, if you're listening, we love you. We miss you. Yeah. Hope you're doing well. Same with Gun Show Larry. Gun Show Larry. That was the raccoon. Uh, Noah has a thing for, like, taking in animals that off have the been st- abandoned. Street. And there's those 11 possums we found the other time. You found 11 possums? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Good stuff. Man. 
not a big people person, but you know, pull an animal off the road. Yeah. That's, oh, he's got he's got the flag. Like if you look at yeah, there, he's got uh, a possum flag. In fake there. your death, eat trash, or whatever. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so uh, I say you guys are at the uh, the concert, and the uh, the band you are your front row, and the band pulls you up on stage, and you, you get to sing one song with the band who, who what would be the band and what would be the song that you would you would like to take the stage with there are a lot of really funny answers to this question like like obviously the Bee Gees are no more they are one third but like the like mental image of like Barry Gibb like seeing you in the crowd and being like pointing Sean, like, get up! Come here. up! Sean's been known to tear up some Bee Gees, yeah. and, and then like here. as you like rise to the stage, up to the mic, you just go, ah! you know, like <laughs> in perfect harmony with them. Yeah, it would be amazing. I don't think that's my answer though. Uh, Man, I don't know anything. Anything that Dave Grohl is doing, like if you get up on stage with him, which is like fun. one of the more feasible answers to this question to actually happen. Yeah, probably pretty hype, right? It's like, I'd do Dave Grohl. That would, like, well, <laughs> <laughs> I would join Dave Grohl on stage. Yes. Perhaps he's in a chair again and he needs someone to play guitar. I could do it. Right. Um, yeah, speaking of that, real quick, did you guys watch the Taylor Hawkins thing last night? Yeah. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. He uh, brought his son up. Yeah. Did a couple Foo Fighters songs with him. Kid ripped. Yeah. Um, yeah. saving that to watch later tonight it's like six hours but they got they get Noel or Liam up there one Liam. of the Gallagher's opened <laughs> it was Liam that's really funny <laughs> I don't think he even LG, not, I don't think he even sucks. swore out of that's respect. impressive but uh <laughs> um, man if I was gonna join someone on stage it'd probably be Arctic Monkeys but I don't know what song I feel like it would be any of them yeah it's tricky what do you think? I'm kind of in a similar boat, but with Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are picking some depressing ass shows to get. I'm not here. <laughs> you could dance with them. You, you think Tom, Tom York, York would dance? pull you up on stage? No. <laughs> you think Tom York would touch any fan? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tom York looks like he's scared to ask for ketchup. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i'd probably do that yeah i wish foxing would pull me up i've tried so many times <laughs> like the past four st louis shows minus the one where i had covid uh i was like front row center a dude like accidentally spit on me because i was too close and he was screaming good that times like a good time. yeah. um what uh as far as a uh, blonde guru what would be a uh like a dream duet or a collaboration you all would like to see for the band is there certain uh somebody you think would uh you'd like to jam with or something Brian Wilson yeah that'd be sick from 50 years ago Zoe Deschanel did like a whole Brian Wilson tribute album that I think he was part of yeah. that's a weird <laughs> crossover a tribute album that he was a part of Oh, I thought you were saying like he his name is on it, but he wasn't actually on it. No, no, no. I think he had some part in making it. But okay. It was her idea. Um, Dream team, right there. Man. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't know of anyone who would want to work with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Baxter. I was, I was gonna say you got bigger. Baxter. Let's get Johnny Marr in for the second album. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good pick, Johnny Marr. Johnny Marr. Smiths, yeah. Johnny Marr makes any band he's in good. Oh, yeah. Smiths are no more. Morrissey sucks. Johnny <laughs> Marr's good. Uh, the Cribs were mid. He joined, made their best album. Back to being all right. Modest Mouse, I think some people think that's one of the worst albums, but I'll stand by it. Johnny Marr makes them better. Oh, that's a good album. I think that's a good one. You got mm -hmm. an answer? No. no. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Besides Adele. Adele Guru yeah. Yeah. <laughs> split EP. Adele's too good for us. <laughs> hey, it's a dream. We can dream. Uh, that would be uh, pretty wild. Be uh, 
be fun to, I don't know. Uh, she, she seems like she has a, a good sense of humor and a fun, a fun hang yeah. and stuff. And, and, uh, so very good intentions. Yeah. We seems could get like. someone like totally out of music too. Right. Like just me. someone totally esoteric, like, like, I don't know, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> oh, and no, he is in music, but yeah. like not, not that music. I wonder if right? Josh has one of his albums. Josh has like all of the worst albums, like the <laughs> William Shatner jazz albums. Yeah, he like like he collects them. I don't know if he if they collect or if it's just like they found them and couldn't pass up on it. Mm. Sure. Like uh, maybe they've got that Corey Feldman album. <laughs> Did he ever make physical copies of that album? How about the <laughs> How about the Hugh Laurie album? <laughs> That's actually dope. House is a sick jazz pianist. <laughs> yes. He kind of looks like one, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, the cane really sells it in the painkiller addiction. I just saw, uh, we were watching uh, 101 Dalmatians and uh, from 96. Okay. And he's in there as as one of the bad guys. And I, I was like, I didn't, didn't remember any of that, but uh, I was like, hey, there's House. Nice. I was just thinking of that movie for the first time in years because I passed a car in 141 with a Dalmatian in it, and I was like, I forget that people actually have those. <laughs> those <laughs> are like real a dogs. real dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the spots up They're fake. in the same category as like the, the flying dog looking thing from Never Ending Story. <laughs> <laughs> they only exist in movies. Right. <laughs> uh,. All right. What about um, you? We get the uh, blonde guru um, box set of action figures. What would you all like to see to be uh, your accessories to go with your your action figure? I want Josh to be ripped, <laughs> just like yoked. <laughs> Josh will be wearing stripes and these stupid cargo pants that they refuse to take <laughs> off. Josh wears these cargo pants with like the hammer hook in them and it pisses me off for no good reason. I just grab the hook and I whip them around. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of love. Uh, what accessory would Josh have? Besides Zabs? He doesn't... Sorry. They don't accessorize really. I would no. say if anybody accessorizes in this band, it's probably you. What do I accessorize? And it would just be like... Random cables, cables, <laughs> pedals, random shit I found on marketplace. Yeah, <laughs> some keyboard from the 1970s that barely functions, and you're like, no, it's amazing. Hey, they're all mostly working now. There's minus one, maybe two. <laughs> um, I feel like maybe Josh would have his classic Gabon, right? Gabon. His 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 Gibson. Oh yeah yeah. <laughs> Josh He's has got a this Les Paul. It's like it's a Les Paul that looks really real until you get up on it and you're like, oh, this is like a full like a Gabon. yeah, it's Gibbon from like the seventies <laughs> made in Japan. It's just funny. Uh, uh, what would Cole have? I can't really say about accessories, but definitely the Wolverine. Hair. Yeah, the Wolverine hair. <laughs> there was this phase of Cole where he, I don't know, he showed up with like awful hair like he just rolled out of bed <laughs> and it looked like wolverine and it we've like got just it like on spiked tape. up at the angles you know it was like it was like all like this but like purposely out and up we're behind the scenes super secret you're getting intel on this now we're working on a a documentary to follow the album of stuff that we've been shooting for the past several years it feels like um on an old vhs camera and I've perfectly captured all of Cole's phases <laughs> between like long hair Cole, short hair, bleached, Culverine. Culverine. Uh, it's we've got it all. I'm excited. Yeah. Um don't know what his accessory would be. Showing up late. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving early. Uh because he's gotta move. Yeah, gotta move, gotta work in the morning. Yeah, right. sure, Cole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You already say yours? No, I'm thinking. What would it be? Probably be a really dumb hat. Or a big hoodie, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> a wig? Am, yeah, a wig. Uh, it would be a wig. Could I have there a couple was, wigs? Is there that... was one show where Hal 
uh was wearing like it was like it was like bad. A, a hat with a wig right yeah. and like hair coming down from the wit from the hat it was like a bowler hat yeah <laughs> totally cool it was like <laughs> it's some shit you'd see at a rave <laughs> and steer clear of <laughs> wow but it like it was the hat with the hair and then also the mask i had blue to glasses look like too you were i had and blue glasses. glasses and so you're dressed i just need a disguise people. in my set my right. figurine set how's big disguise. thing is like not being visible like, <laughs> at the release show she'll probably have her back turned to the audience <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah i don't know it's fun to think about some silly stuff um but uh yeah this has been uh, a ton of fun getting to, uh getting to learn a lot more about blonde guru um like i said we got the uh big album release party on the 23rd of september tickets available at offbroadwaystl.com and you can uh, get plugged in with blonde guru on your instagram yeah. and uh we have a, is there a Facebook also? There is a Facebook. If you go to the Instagram, the link tree will take you to everything. Yeah. Um, I was passionate about Facebook. I love <laughs> Facebook. Sure. I, I mean, shit who doesn't? post nonstop. <laughs> um, but yeah, link tree. You can find CDs and all that through our band camp that will start shipping um, on the 9th. Um, if you're in the first 10 to order, which I think we're at 9 now, we're writing you a fancy little love letter. <laughs> I'll put lipstick on and kiss it for you. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, find the music video on the Instagram. And, yeah. Uh, is there YouTube also? That we're going to be rolling out a bunch more yeah. once we get the the other video stuff going. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Just really excited to actually get the ball moving as a the ball move rolling as a band and not just, you know, as two of us at a time working on this thing. Yeah. yeah it's getting kind of real. Yeah, you know? getting real. It's like we gotta actually act like we know what we're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, as uh, thinking about the closing it out and stuff, like you guys, you know, did a lot of this uh, yourself. Um, it was going forward for the next uh, records. Do you think that you will continue that, or do you think you would like to move into a, more of a proper studio with uh, a engineer and producers and stuff or do you you guys uh i mean not, not that there's any right or wrong to any yeah. of it but have you what did you what do you think you like learned uh, the most um, from doing it this way this was my first record to record um i think i learned a lot of what i don't want to do next time but i think i learned a lot of what i do want to do next time so i think we'll be more than okay doing it ourselves. Sean went to school for audio and all that, so right. I'm very comfortable Not major. with his abilities. You know, I took classes. Sure. But he's majorly good at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I would sometime eventually like to work with Ryan Wasaba on something just because he's a good guy. Yeah. So yeah, we got a lot of talented guys around town like that, like Ryan, and yeah. uh, it just would be fun. I, mean, I, I just feel like sometimes also having like that – you know, fifth, sixth different band member having to like to kind of give you some outsider yeah. input and pu push you in a, maybe a little more, you know, in a certain area or whatever direction. And, um, I just think that could all benefit, you know, not that. that yeah. That would definitely be sweet. Like the whole Josh Homme with the Arctic monkeys thing, mm -hmm. like, and like Julian Casablancas with the growlers, it's all just been really cool projects when you pull that other person in. Yeah. Uh, just don't really want to leave the basement all right. that much. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm over here. I mean, like I said, I'm you know these are all just something to think about. Something I'm yeah. thinking about, but like not that. I mean, I love what you guys what you were able to to do here. So, uh, you know, obviously, you guys know what you're doing, and it's it sounds great. And uh, I just think about like just always. Uh, for me, I I feel like if I were if I was there, like because uh, I just. Uh, if it, if I had like unlimited time to do it myself, like I would just you know spend forever, you know, trying to do it. But if somebody's there, like like I need a Sean to kick me in the ass to make make sure it gets done. So you can borrow him. Sometime. Yeah. <laughs> so I just feel like uh, sometimes that's what you know having something like that where somebody's like, you know, when you're on the clock kind of thing, like you have to like get it done. Yeah, and hopefully next record won't take like three or four years. 
Yeah. Really pushing for this one to be yeah. like maybe your tops. We're doing <laughs> next one in a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Uh, but uh, this has been incredible. I'm really uh, glad you all uh, spent some time with me today and got to talk about this record. And I uh, can't wait for everybody else to hear it. And again, uh, coming soon to your uh, favorite streaming platform or you can purchase those physicals and get a get a nice uh, sealed with a kiss note from from Noah. And uh, we'll, uh, but yeah, I appreciate you all. And I'll see you all September 23rd at Off Broadway. All right. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Bye, everyone. <laughs>